that which you put out to invest in riba, the money lender, seeking an increase in your capital, it won't increase with Allah. Oh, there's something wrong with this business. What is it? But that which you put out in charity, giving in charity to help those who are in need, and you do it not so you could get something, you know. France will give you the loan, but you've got to buy the tractors from France. No, that's aid as a form of imperialism. To do what Allah, you give in charity for Allah. Seeking nothing. That will multiply many times with Allah. So there is a contrast between riba and charity. What is the lesson? Answer. In charity you give and you take nothing in return. Shame on you if you're giving and you're seeking something in return. That's not charity. So in charity you give and you take nothing in return. So Allah is teaching you that riba is the opposite of that. In riba you're only taking. Taking from Africa. Taking from Africa taking from Africa and giving nothing in return. So at the end of the day, Africa has nothing and you have everything. Mm -hmm. huh? In this transaction, his loss is your gain. That's not <coughs> business. So now Allah takes us to the second contrast by which he teaches the subject. It's so simple. They say that riba is like business. Allah says, no. Allah has made business halal and made riba haram. So now, what's the difference between business and riba? In a business transaction, you've got to take a risk. Oh yeah. And in taking that risk, you've got to use your business acumen. Hmm? You're not going to invest your money in a business and the businessman drives, his, um, runs his business the way some people drive in KL. <laughs> you want to Invest your money in a business run by someone who has business experience, who has business acumen. And so, in a business transaction, you got a plant in order to reap. But sometimes the farmer plants and the crop doesn't come out. Sometimes he plants and he gets an abundance of crops. So you're taking a chance. That's business. Risk. You can have a profit, you can have a loss. Riba is not like that. Riba is not business. Because in riba, you don't have to plant. All the donkeys will plant and you will reap what they plant. That's not business. The money lender does not want to embrace risk. No. He must get his pound of flesh. Regardless of you. <laughs> Whether you suffer loss or make a profit is irrelevant to him. He has to get his pound of flesh. So he is engaged in risk free investment. He is, to use medical terminology, he is immunized from loss. Allah says that's not business. When you do business, then Allah can take from some and give to others. And so wealth will circulate through the economy. One day for you, one day for me. When governments attempt 
to distribute wealth and to redistribute wealth. They make a mess of it. They corrupt the market, but they're too foolish to even understand that. And they corrupt the very people they're trying to help, but they're too foolish to even understand that. Islam insists on a free and fair market. And no one has an advantage over anyone else in the market. The Malay doesn't have any advantage over the Chinese, not in an Islamic market. And the Chinese do not have an advantage over the Indian. No! The market treats everybody the same. Whether you believe in Allah or you worship a stone. A free and a fair market. In a free and a fair market, Allah can take from some and give to others. And so there will be constant distribution and redistribution of wealth. But when an economy is based on riba, because it is not business, the rich will now remain, can you finish the sentence? Permanently rich. Forever and ever. And keep on growing richer. And the poor will be imprisoned in permanent poverty. Forever and ever. And keep on growing poor. So you reach where Indonesia is. You of course are in the comfort zone. But you reach where Indonesia is and Bangladesh is. And that is oppression. I don't need to continue the lecture now. Lecture is finished. <laughs> when the rich are permanently rich and the poor are permanently poor, that is oppression. The Jal uses this in order to reduce mankind to poverty. Which ones of mankind? The one who resists him. And those who support him that like that little island south of Malaysia, little Israel was it called? <laughs> yeah. That supports the judge. Oh, you'll ride on the gravy train. You'll ride on the gravy train. Whoever supports Israel will have lots of bread. And whoever, oh, sorry, whoever supports the child and whoever opposes the child will have no bread. <laughs> Nabi Muhammad and Islam said that 1400 years ago and it's here today. It's here today. So if you live in an economy in which there's plenty of bread, you better be worried. You better be worried. What happens now is that as people sink into poverty and destitution because of riba, it becomes easier for the rich to rule over the poor. And the rich rule over the poor on behalf of the judge. And the rich nations of the world rule over the poor nations of the world on behalf of the judge. As you sink more and more into poverty and destitution, you lose your freedom. You lose your independence. You lose your power. It's like the bite of a snake. And the poison enters. And slowly the poison paralyzes you. This is riba. How do we get out of it? Prophet Muhammad said the time will come. When you will not be able to find a single person in all of mankind who will not be consuming riba. And whosoever says he is not consuming riba, verily the dust of riba would be upon him. Verily the vapor of riba would be upon him. It is here today. 